we have a spotting scope like so and we have a military grade night vision unit folks this is really cool we have a customer who wants to put them together he wants the night vision behind the spotting scope so he can try to identify things at night this would be a really cool episode of nyc cnc folks So what is exactly is this? I don't know a ton about night vision, but these are state of the art. I think they've been around for a while and they use, I think like a phosphorus or chemical type of thing to magnify existing light, something like 30,000 times. So here's some footage inside our shop. No um, electronic light on you. There's some cracks in the walls and ceiling. So you're seeing a tiny bit of light creep in, but you can't see a damn thing. Uh, with your naked eye and through these the room is just bright as a whistle. So what do we need to do? Well, we've got a little clip here. We can I guess hang over. I've been trying to think through this design and then we've got some if we take off the uh, end cap here of the PVS 14s, we've got some ID threads in there. So let's use some guesswork to guess that thread pitch. We'll use Fusion 360 to whip up a part. We'll use the Tormach lathe to cut the threads. Hopefully they work. And then the Tormach mill to make the rest of it. At least that's the, the plan. This could be the first uh, Wednesday widget that fails in the end. But let's give it a shot, folks. So we've got to figure out the thread pitch on the front of the PVS-14. So if we take a look, um, and again, we may, we may botch this. We take a look. We're at 1.165. So that's the measured diameter of the ID thread. So that's the, I'm calling that the minor ID. Now the thread pitch, this is gonna be hard to show on camera, but I was playing around and using a thread gauge here, you would think it would be something normal. And it could be, I tried metric and it wasn't coming out. Um, 32 is a much more common thread pitch than 34. But when I put the 34 in there and try to hold it up to the light and, and just feel it out, 34 feels better to me. So if you guys are photography experts or I was Googling around for the specs and thread pitch, I couldn't find it. Um, we'll see if I'm right at the end of the video, um, but I'd be curious to see if there's like maybe 34 TPI is common in the uh, photography world. But if you can look, 34 seems right. So that's what we're gonna go with. If you don't own one of these, um, you should buy one because they're cheap. But remember everybody who owns any screws owns some types of thread gauges. And for instance, here's a, just a regular old 32 TPI socket cap screw. And you can stick that in there and have a different point of comparison. So don't overthink it sometimes. Now, take a look at this Excel sheet. If we have 1.165, that's our minor. The question when we turn our threads is what's the major going to be? And if we take a look here at the, uh, at the machine's handbook at a 32 TPI, and I know that's wrong, but again, um, we're trying to get the part made, not worry about um, little things. If we take a look at the minor and major diameter of a 32 TPI thread, I've got that right here. It's 0.19 is the major, 0.156 is the minor. So it's a 34 thou difference. So this is what I'm trying. Um, I got it as 33 here. So that means the major should be the 1.165, the existing thing we just measured with the calipers, plus half of that thread distance, because obviously that's on the radius. So I'm adding a little bit of a cushion because we don't want the major threads to be pushing all the way out into the root of the PVS-14. So I'm thinking, knock on wood, that if we give ourselves a 2,000 cushion, we should turn, I think I concluded down here, turn the major part to 1.18. So that's some not fun, but I think necessary thread math. We'll see how it works. So let's do a little bit backwards. Let's show the part that I've come up with and already modeled so that you guys have, I think, a better idea. And then we'll come back and, and walk through how we made it. So here is the idea. The hook back here, that half, half semi-spherical hook, is going to clamp over the end of the Cytron scope here. Not ideal, I actually kind of wanted it to be threaded on or permanently fastened on, but the customer actually said, maybe that'll be good for a quick detach and we can use a elastic band or a hose clamp if we need to get it on there tighter. Again, for version one here, I'm okay with it. And then what we'll do is we'll have 
This will be the portion that's threaded, and this here will just be a form of thread relief. The John from a year or two ago, I would have made this part by starting with a, a circle on a layer, and then, and then putting a new layer and sketching another circle at different dimensions and, and building it up layer by layer. Let's do it the right way. Here's an advanced drawing. Take a look. This is the part we're going to thread. That's our thread relief. This is the wider part, and then this is the hook that will come down over the scope. Let's hop into Fusion 360 and let's see if this will work. Actually, I know it's going to work, but nevertheless. So, new part. We're going to sketch a line. This one. And the first thing we're going to do is sketch a line that's going to be uh, a construction line. So, oops. Click on that line and move over here and choose construction. See how it goes in a, a blinked, a, a dotted line? Now, let's just sketch out the rough shape that we've got. And then we'll go back and really dimension. The first line, we, I happen to know, is going to be 0.19. So we're going to create that one and, and dimension it just so that we're starting on the right scale. And then let's just create the rest of these as, as just rough dimensions. Well, so that one, I, you would think it would snap to that. Oh, there it goes. Actually, it'll snap to that height there. Okay, not dimensioned yet, but that's the idea. Now, go to Create, Revolve, and let's select this. And do I, you know what, axis right, right there. Look at that, folks. How friggin' cool is that? so much more powerful, so much better use of parametric modeling and not having six different little layers and re redoing work. I love it. Okay, let's go back and fix the dimensions on that. I'm actually going to do that in fast forward because that's not the takeaway here. And then we're going to finish up the CAD and then hit the cam. We've got, take a look at the inspector measure. It's one thing I don't like about Fusion. I wish it had sort of live measurements like SolidWorks does. But if we click on this ring here, we can see it's a point inch 8 inch diameter ID through hole and then we're going to use a piece of one and a half inch aluminum round bar so the OD is what I do here 1.48 just so we can clean up the outside of that and okay well, all we need to do now is cut this guy uh, cut the front part off here sketch a line click that face I'm holding down control in the middle mouse to move around like this and we're just going to let it snap to the top part of that circle there. Come down and you can see it's not snapping to zoom in. And you'll see it snaps to right there. Like so. Now let's go to sketch arc. Three point arc. Click the first point. Click the second point, And then it should just snap to right there. Now we'll go to right, or actually just right click, press pull. We can choose those two faces and we will do distance of negative 0.36. There we have it, folks. There is our part. Let's back to the cam. Model cam. We did just get a la uh, Tormach lathe post, so stay tuned for a video on that. We're going to do the turning, though, and the conversational here in a minute. So this is just going to be the mill cam. We're going to start out by a setup, and we will change it to stock to a fixed sized cylinder of one and a half. Let's see if that look right. You know, I don't understand. This was happening to me when I was playing around. I don't get this. It's a. It looks like it's something is oblong, but it isn't, and it has to do. Well, regardless, here's how we're going to fix that. Go back into CAD, model, sketch, sketch a 1.5 inch, hit enter, click on it, and go to construction. Stop sketch. Now go back into CAM, setup, under stock, we're going to do, oh, did I just, uh, 
Oh, sorry, I did just goof. That's right. You, it's one of the few quirks in HSM you can choose from extruded sketch. You can't here. Sorry. Go back into model, edit sketch, change that back to a real line, and we're just going to click, right click it, press pull, and do it as a new body. Okay, now you, it looks like you've lost your model, but if you see here, you can expand this little uh, light bulb here and turn off body two. Now, go back into cam, setup, and then under stock, we can choose from solid, and the solid we can actually select it in the tree here, even though it's turned off, we can click on it. And I like that because that means you have parametric CAD control over what your actual um, what your actual body is, which can be really helpful. And setup, let's just make sure that looks like it's centered. It is perfect. Drilling, I'm going to do drill number nine, which is my half inch drill. And we'll do whole bottom, maybe point one, make sure that goes all the way through. Now we can do, I wanted to get that hole out of there because I think we're going to hold this with a really thin um, grip on a set of soft jaws. So drilling is going to be easier. Now we'll come in 2D adaptive with our roughing tool, tool 11, and we will just choose this and that looks fine. Let's see what we get here. We'll leave some stock. Leave uh, 10 thou. Optimal load. I'm going to go easy here. We're going to say, you know, only 80 thou radial. And we'll definitely want to do it in multiple depths. Say 0.2 max. And let's just let's just see what we get here. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. Um, let's increase it to uh, four depths of cut. This is definitely not something where I'm trying to get it done quickly, and frankly, it's only a few seconds to add that. So now if we do a quick simulation, we'll see drill through all the way, and then come in with the tool 11, barely even contacting as it helical ramps down. I like that. And pretty gentle cuts. Great. You can drag along here to speed it up, which is a great feature. And that's where it leaves us. Perfect.